Foremost news from Southeast Asia. Hello and welcome to Duran ASEAN Yoit Gauri today on our ASEAN Daily, and I'm here to bring you news from all over Southeast Asia. And of course, uh, today is a Friday, and the weekends are just around the corner. I'm sure you guys are pretty excited uh, already, and uh, you can't wait for the weekends to come. And before that, uh, before I proceed. Uh, with our news commentary, I just want to start off with a little quote. Uh, well, when you start each day with a grateful heart, light illuminates from within. And of course, uh, the mornings are the most important time of the day because how your attitude is like in the morning pretty much determines how the rest of the day is going to turn out. And on that positive note, uh, we will move on to Thailand, which uh, has re- recently been hit by a tragedy. Uh, of course, the bomb blast that happened just a few days back. And the uh, blast actually has uh, their premiere looking for answers on TV. And uh, let's see what this is about. Apparently, the police are working on the Arrow One Shrine blast. Uh, should watch the American crime series Blue Bloods for leads. And this was said by the Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha. And private investigators, especially the national police chiefs, should watch this series because it will help them to get tips, ideas, insights for their case. General Prayut is also well known for his passion in film and this is what he told the reporters when they met him for some comments. And Blue, Blood, Blue Bloods is actually a uh, kind of like a procedural drama comes up opera which was filmed in New York and follows the exploits of the Irish American Regan family of police officers as their careers unfold in New York City Police Department. And it stars Tom Selleck as Frank Regan, who is the chief of police in New York. And uh, Prayut, uh, who's, who is uh, his wife, is an English lecturer at the Sri Lankan University, was also quick to come up with the phrase uh, Str- "stronger together" uh, as a hashtag on social media to boost to boost uh, the uh, ties of morale after the blast. And he said that although I became prime minister by a coup, my method is to unite thighs is democratic and don't call me pretentious for using the English term it has to be an international phrase so it's our home our country will be stronger together if we join hands it's quite an interesting approach by Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha but uh, at this point I, I think whatever goes, uh, whatever that works for them because they are um, in dire need to find out who exactly detonated uh, that bomb that caused multiple casualties uh, in Thailand. And uh, moving on from that, Thailand is also looking to reshuffle their cabinet uh, following what happened. And uh, Thai Prime Minister Prayut chan cha has of course revamped his cabinet less than a year uh, after he became uh, Prime Minister and less than a year after the cabinet was formed as well. And he has named uh, a new Deputy Prime Minister and a new Finance Minister as well, two very uh, important uh, portfolios right there. And look, uh, this is partly because of the uh, tough economic situation that they're facing at the moment. Uh, Their economy has been struggling as well, uh, not doing so well. Uh, And the investors, a lot of investors have actually pulled away uh, from Thailand uh, because the stocks and bonds in the recent months uh, looks like it has worsened. And it also had the most uh, equity outflows in Asia this year. And the BAT is one of the worst performers in the region. Of course, this uh, whole currency uh, dropping is another issue altogether. But uh, although the Yunta took power last year and... uh, Prayut chan cha came into power. It seems that the Yunta hasn't yet finalized a new constitution that uh, it says is needed before the election is held. Although critics are saying that the drafts will only risk deepening the political divide that Thailand is already facing. And the draft is, of course, also up for vote uh, at the National Reform Council early in September. 
and uh, Prayut has also been faulted for populating the cabinet with military personnel. I mean, you cannot blame him. He was the military general, so what uh, what really did you expect? Uh, and he has little uh, experience in his uh, own portfolio, as well as the people that he elected. Uh, they were not uh, very well versed in their own portfolios as well, which is why uh, this reshuffling uh, could be a good thing, could be a, st- a, a positive step for Thailand where they are actually uh, coming up with a, a new drive, a new energy, new uh, coordination, trying to work uh, a better plan uh, to better the economic uh, economic situation in Thailand. And the failure to turn around the economy right away uh, could, of course, trust him into a lot of criticism. And it could also not be good for the economy of Thailand in the long run because they need to start bucking up to get the investors back uh, to Thailand. And uh, of course, the newly minted officials have already uh, got their task and uh, we will wait and see uh, if the economy can actually uh, be revamped and uh, if they manage to get back the investors that they have lost because the whole uh, point of reshuffling the cabinet is to bring back confidence among tourists, among investors, and they're also trying to push for reforms because uh, they're also facing some structural problems as well. And so with that, uh, we'll take a quick break. When I come back, I'll bring you some news from Malaysia. ASEAN Dailies First and foremost news from Southeast Asia Hello and welcome back to Duran ASEAN Yo with Gauri and I'm here on our ASEAN Daily to bring you more news from all over Southeast Asia and moving on uh, earlier we talked a little bit about Thailand what's going on with their political and economic situation in the country and how they are scrambling to find out who detonated the bomb at the Erawan Shrine and now we're moving on to Indonesia uh, well before that maybe a little update on Malaysia first on the birthday for protest that will be happening uh, end of the month um, this year, uh, sorry, this month. And uh, after it seems that they had a request at the DBKL, the Kuala Lumpur City Hall, which apparently turned down their request to use Dataran Merdeka uh, for Bursa 4. And that uh, is, of course, quite tricky because uh, it has been announced to pretty much everyone that the venue will be at Dataran Merdeka. And it seems that DBKL uh, surprisingly informed them that there will be an event uh, at Dataran Merdeka during that period of time. Uh, well, it kind of makes sense as well because it is uh, very close to our independence Day and there might uh, be uh, some things happening over there as well. And uh, it seems all uh, due to the sudden unavailability of the Tran Merdeka and Padang Merbo, the participants will have to rest overnight on the streets of Kuala Lumpur. And some of them are suggesting uh, that uh, the, the, the venue has to be somewhere at Pataling Street as well. Uh, and uh, Bursa Chairperson Maria Chin Abdullah clarified that uh, well, they're pretty much going to do it anywhere. They're not going to stop. They're not going to let uh, this uh, little setback uh, stop them. And they are still going to go ahead uh, with the protest. Uh, of course, Bursa is calling for uh, clean and fair elections among uh, other reforms on their demand list. So uh, for everyone who will be attending Bursa 4.0, uh, do not go to Dataran Merdeka. It's not there. It's not at Padang Merbo. Uh, I think uh, you can go to their website uh, of, or their Facebook page to find out more about where uh, to gather and where will the ultimate location be. And moving on to Indonesia, there's also been a little protest happening due to land dispute, uh, sorry, land dispute issues, uh, which is quite common in Indonesia apparently, where efforts by government and businesses uh, they tend to to clear up uh, lands and uh, try to get people who are staying there to actually leave the place so they can uh, build uh, some commercial buildings there, shopping malls, offices, or whatever it is. And uh, this has caused quite an outcry among Indonesians, and uh, which is why they uh, started protesting uh, against uh, 
the officials, the authorities that's been forcing them uh, out of their homes. And uh, these residents who are facing uh, eviction clashed with the police uh, just yesterday, uh, prompting these security forces to fire tear gas and water cannons at them. And uh, this latest clash, uh, also uh, one of their reasons was that their Jakarta governor, Ahok, uh, is trying to remove the squatters and demolish housing along the banks of Jakarta, uh, Jakarta's Chiliwong River in Kampung Pulo, which uh, frequently floods during the monsoon uh, season. And it seems the solution for that, that they're trying to go for, is to evict these people from their homes and uh, try, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what uh, what exactly are they going to be doing with that land, but uh, we do know that the people there are definitely not happy. Uh, and well, when there's a protest, uh, there's always a risk of things uh, going out of control, going violent. And uh, in this case, the uh, police had to resort to firing tear gas and water cannon and so far the Jakarta police could not be comment uh, could not be uh, well met for any comments so uh, we don't know what they have to say about the situation as well uh, but I hope uh, that the solution to the frequent floods during the monsoon season uh, is not by evicting the people uh, perhaps they can come up with a more amicable solution that uh, would be a win-win for both sides of the party and moving on to ASEAN, back to Malaysia again. ASEAN leaders to get report on Malaysia's crackdown on freedom, says Human Rights Group. Now, Human Rights uh, and Malaysia, I would say that they are a very odd couple. Uh, as much as we're trying to make things work, uh, we still have multiple issues when it comes to uh, human rights in the country or even as the ASEAN chair this year in terms of how we're handling the whole human rights crisis uh, in Malaysia. And of course, uh, this also came uh, in light of the recent uh, sedition charges against cartoonist Zunar and other curbs uh, imposed by Putrajaya on the freedom of expression. And all this will be detailed in the Human Rights Watch's report on Malaysia that will be given to every ASEAN leader at the original summit in November. And Deputy Director for Human Rights Watch, Phil Robertson, said that the report, which is uh, due uh, for release sometime in either September or October, will be on the desk of uh, every leader uh, flying to Malaysia for the summit, which, of course, our Prime Minister Najib Razak will be hosting. And it's actually the 27th ASEAN summit as uh, current chair of the regional group. And Mr. Robertson also added that the Human Rights Watch has also written to the Home Ministry with uh, questions on the crackdown on freedom of expression, on whether it would drop charges that are no longer uh, considered criminal offences under the revised uh, Sedition Act. And Zunar's lawyer, uh, Latifa Koya, who was present at the press conference, uh, sorry, who was present at the press conference, also said that the following amendments, uh, especially the case uh, against Zunar uh, should be dropped. And uh, I think this is a uh is something that's been uh, ongoing. We've been, uh, of course, uh, talking about it a lot, and we really hope that Malaysia will step up its human rights game, especially because we're supposed to be setting um, an example as the chair of ASEAN. But of course, uh, I think all the countries in ASEAN, not just Malaysia, has a long way to go in terms of uh, human rights. We're probably still not that familiar with the whole concept and why human rights uh, is so important when it comes to uh, a country or even when it comes to uh, being a democratic nation or just protecting the basic rights of human beings, especially workers in the country, uh, migrant workers, migrant labor uh, who are in a different country trying to uh, make it work for them. And uh, well, Malaysia has not been doing that well either, but of course recently the U.S. has also upgraded us in the human rights tier, which, uh, well, was quite surprising and, well, there are a few parties that are not quite happy with that as well, and uh, especially because the U.S. did it for 
uh, economic and political reasons for the relationship between the two countries. And of course, that shouldn't be the way. Uh, if you want to upgrade a certain country, uh, make sure that they have uh, some substantial efforts in improving the human rights uh, state in their country. And we'll take another short break. When we come back, we'll move on to the economic side of Southeast Asia. <laughs> ASEAN Dailies, first and the foremost news from Southeast Asia. Hello and welcome back to Duran ASEAN. You're still with Gauri and I'm here to bring you more news on uh, all over Southeast Asia. Of course, uh, we're here on our uh, DuranASEAN.com. And moving on to our economic side in Southeast Asia, we have Malaysia strengthening up its ties. Uh, sorry, ASEAN strengthening up its ties with China to strengthen the UN drop and of course this currency drop uh, has been uh, quite an issue in the region uh, but in Malaysia particularly everyone has been blaming 1MDB uh, for the uh, ringgit drop uh, which is quite bad at the moment uh, as we speak it's uh, 1 USD to uh, RM 4.1 uh, that uh, is a new record for Malaysia and of course it's uh, not a very good news, but what people fail to realize is that it's not really due to 1MDB. Uh, the currency uh, drop has been happening in a lot of countries, and it's uh, mainly because of uh, China's devaluation of the UN and uh, because of their own currency war with the US as well. And that has pretty much affected the rest of the world, especially in Southeast Asia, because we rely quite heavily on China when it comes to uh, economic import and export. And coming down to this, which is why uh, ASEAN and China are trying to work uh, something out together to see if they can uh, try to stabilize the situation. Well, uh, Malaysia does have, uh, so far, they have uh, continued to strengthen tie, uh, trade ties with China amid current global economic challenges, uh, like I mentioned uh, just now. And as far as ASEAN and Malaysia are concerned, China is our foremost trading partner and their devaluation is having a huge impact. And this uh, statement was also supported by Mustafa Mohammed, uh, who is our uh, Ministry of International Trade and Industry. And uh, But that doesn't have to stop us. We have to keep on strengthening relations, uh, still keep uh, building a uh, rapport with China. And last week, actually, China sharply devalued the yuan uh, as part of what the government said were reforms of their economy and also trying to make the exchange rate more market-oriented. But uh, the decision actually has accentuated worries over the health of the world's uh, second largest economy following a slump in exports. And our minister also went on to say that the latest development reaffirms ASEAN's de need to deepen the economic relations uh, and also in order to minimize any negative impact that we may be facing. And he said the current uh, economic integration stands at around 91%, uh, which is a very high figure, and efforts are underway to reach at least 95% by November, and Malaysia, as the chairman of ASEAN, will definitely play its role um, in trying to foster closer relationships. And they will also work on this uh, during the uh, ASEAN uh, regional forum that will be happening. And uh, it's, it's interesting to see how uh, one country, when you're such a big country and you're the second largest economy in the world, and uh, a simple move uh, from their side, from what they see as that economic reform and just trying to stabilize their currency has pretty much affected a lot of countries, not just Malaysia, uh, Singapore as well. Uh, Vietnam is also facing some problems and a few other countries. So, yeah, well, we, we need to stop blaming 1MDB because that is not the reason. That is uh, the reason for a lot of other economic problems in Malaysia, but not uh, the drop in the ringgit. And moving on from there, Malaysia. Still in Malaysia, we have the second highest levels of bank account ownership in ASEAN. And uh, this was... Uh, where we actually have 78% of our population aged over 15 uh, holding bank accounts. Uh, sorry, well, Malaysia does have the second levels of bank account ownership 
for adults amongst Southeast Asian countries. And Thailand comes in third, according to the Global Index Findex 2014. 81% of adults in Malaysia are exposed to financial services in 2014, uh, from about 66% in 2011. And in 2014, that figure, uh, well, uh, it shows a higher level of bank account ownership compared to the global rate of 62%. Uh, the World Bank Group Senior Financial Economist, Finance Market uh, Global Practice Dr. Jose de Luna Martinez said Malaysia is a success story in promoting financial inclusion. And Malaysia, uh, in terms of its financial system, uh, financial system development plan carving itself uh, to specialize in Islamic finance, he told reporters uh, during the briefing at the Global Findex 2015 measuring financial inclusion around the world on Thursday. And a major contributor to Malaysia's development success is its innovative, resilient and inclusive financial sector. And from 2011 to 2014, the account ownership for adults from the poorest 40% households in Malaysia has increased to 76% uh, from 50%. And our bank Negara Tansri Zeti Akhtar Aziz also highlighted the importance of financial inclusion during her official address and uh, it seems like well Malaysia does have the second highest level of bank account and we're uh, being applauded for that uh, for our financial inclusion uh, in this region and uh, hopefully this uh, we can set an example for other countries as well um, just like what uh, Dr. Jose has suggested and with that I'll take another short break when we come back we'll talk about uh, the arts and culture side of Southeast Asia <laughs> ASEAN Dailies, first and foremost news from Southeast Asia. Hello and welcome back to Duran ASEAN. Uh, you're still with Gauri here with you on our ASEAN Daily where I'm bringing you news from all over Southeast Asia. And now since we're done with pretty much all the serious news for today, it's time to move on uh, to the uh, social cultural side uh, where we bring you uh, news on society, arts and culture. And today we have a little something about the queen of uh, the Tiger Moms where she's taking on Singapore. Hmm. What a surprise. Uh, and, uh, well, Amy Chua, of course, who is a Yale professor uh, and author, or better known as the Iron Fisted Asian American Tiger Mom, is exporting her parenting style to Singapore with the launch of an after school enrichment center in the uh, tuition crazy city state. And it's called the Keys Academy, which focuses on both uh, academic as well. Uh, as soft skills such as creativity, leadership, and aims to groom secondary school students for uh, university and jobs in the future, with classes in robot building, computer coding, as well as externships with global corporations and college admissions program. And according to her, they are going to get the best of both worlds, uh, which is one of the four, uh, Amy Chua is actually one of the four advisors to the center, uh, she told CNBC. And she likes that Keys Academy preserves the hard core. You need to know the basics and there's no way around uh, that hard work. And she also said that it equally focuses on communication skills and how can you be interesting, dynamic, because that's really uh, what it takes uh, to succeed at this age. And it's uh, kind of no surprise that Keys Academy would choose Singapore as its first uh, location globally. And uh, of course, Amy Chua has been a lot of under uh, a lot of criticism when she released uh, her book on uh, being a tiger mom. Uh, but that hasn't really stopped her. Well, she she said that if a child gets a B, uh, which would never happen in the first place, there would be screaming, hair tearing, uh, explosion, and the de devastated mother uh, would get dozens uh, of hundreds of practice tests uh, to work them and get their child to get an A. Uh, of course, her book was called Battle Him of the Tiger Mother, uh, and it's one of the most commented piece on WSJ. Uh, and she also told The Guardian that she also received death threats well, uh, but she said that she's proud of her daughters now, uh, and they are good friends, happy and well adjusted. Okay, that's uh, interesting. Well, and uh, during the interview, she was also asked that 
that she's been under uh, a lot of criticism that people still hate her uh, because of her methods in uh, raising a child but of course uh, well it's not up to us uh, to criticize her style of parenting but uh, I do think that uh, being a tiger mom is not quite the efficient way uh, to raise a, a child uh, especially when someone is that young and they go through a tremendous amount of uh, mental pressure and emotional pressure because they feel the obligation that they need to perform well but at the same time uh, that it's done in such a hardcore way I mean when it comes to uh, children uh, whether starting from 9 years old 10 years old 12 years old you're still you're way too young to be burdened with homework and math practices I think it's time to uh, actually go out and play and get hurt and learn your lessons that way uh, but uh, of course it is doesn't work that way for everybody uh, and it's uh, let's see how Keys Academy uh, how uh, the uh, students who graduate from there uh, will turn out and uh, we also have another news from Singapore where MAS, uh, not the Malaysian Airlines, but the Monetary Authority of Singapore, has apologized for misspelling Singapore's first president's name, the late uh, Yusuf Ishaq, in name in a folder containing the commemorative SG50 notes that were released on 20th of August. And his name was misspelled as, uh, as Yusuf Ishaq. And Mas spokesperson said uh, it's printing stickers uh, to replace the misspelled portions and the stickers will be affixed to all the folders available from banks from August 25 onwards. And those who have collected the photos already may obtain the stickers. They also apologize for the unfortunate typographical error in our first president use of Ishak's uh, name. Uh, said the spokesperson. Uh, well, uh, I guess uh, Singapore does have a reputation for being very efficient and uh, this news kind of contradicts that but hey, mistakes happen and uh, uh, it's good that they are trying to rectify it as soon as they can. And with that, that ends our uh, Asan Daily for this morning. Uh, I'm Gauri and uh, I'll be back later at 9 o'clock to have an interesting discussion about Marvel uh, Universe and some of their favorite superheroes. Uh, I'll be interviewing three different guys in the studio here. Uh, so don't forget to like us on Facebook, on Twitter, follow us on uh, Instagram as well. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the daily podcasts on news and interviews. Also, download our very own Durian ASEAN app so you can listen to us anywhere, anytime.